Hi there, welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of unique homes and showcase stories of people living alternatively. Today we're going to meet a young couple who are both in the army and had the desire to live nomadically, so they decided to build a home inside of a bus. The inside of this schooly conversion is super cute and cozy. And since they built it themselves, they were able to customize the design to fit the needs of their fur babies. If you like videos like this where we showcase stories of people living alternatively, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know every single time we publish a new video. What's up guys? I'm Austin. And I'm Jenny. And, and we're, we're the, the Bumpin' Bump Bus. I did not grow up in a camping family. We did go like, I guess the normal amount. Like it wasn't something that we did often. And a big reason for that is because I live with my stepdad and he was full-time army. So he camped all the time. So when it came to the time like for the family to go camping, he just never wanted to. Our journey in the army. We must have signed up like pretty close. So our contracts lined up, we were in the same section. And then, yeah, we just started talking to each other and hanging out and like got to know each other like after basic yeah. training and everything. And we both just did four and a half years. That's how we met through the army. You honestly don't have a lot of freedom when you're in the military. We knew we just wanted to travel at some point in our lives. And we weren't super sure about it. We were just telling each other, like, you know, can we build this? We've never yeah, built anything we, yeah. ever. But we had the space. We had a year before we got out of the army. And then we, we had a full-time job, both of us. And yeah. so it was like we had the money to slowly start piecing together the build and all that. And, yeah, we just found the bus. And I think once we bought the bus, it was like game on. We had a house in the army. So we had this little section next to our house, like, where we parked the bus. Right next to our garage, it was so, it was actually like a really good spot to build the bus out. And it took us about a year. We would like work on the bus from as soon as we would wake up until we go to bed. We would go all day without eating sometimes because we were working on the bus nonstop. The bus was $4,000 and the build total was like $28,000. Everything equaled out to like $32,000 with everything included. The bus and the build, yeah. So we got the bus from someone on Facebook Marketplace. We went and looked at a couple other buses, but this was the one that just spoke to us. We painted our bus with Sherwin-Williams paint. I don't really know what color you call it. We started thinking that we were gonna do a two-tone, ended up with one, and we thought it was gonna be a little bit more reddish orange, and now it's like some weird pink color, but we really like it, it turned out good. I swear it's orange. So this is one of my favorite features of the outside of our bus, and I really wanted an outdoor table so we can have drinks out here, drink my wine, and have meals together. So this is the roof of our bus. Up here we have 800 watts of solar. We have two max air fans up here, which keep us really cool in the summer because we can have one blowing in and one blowing out and it creates a nice breeze. We also have our Starlink mounted up here, which means we can have internet wherever we go. So this is our water heater. We chose to do like a regular RV water heater that just pushes in through the wall. And I really like this actually. It runs fully on propane. It's on demand. So we don't have like a tank that we had to find space for or whatever. And it doesn't take much power at all because it's just the 12 volt running the monitor. But it's just easy to access this way. And if we ever need to swap it, we just pull it out and put a new one right back in. And then over here we have an outdoor shower. So our bus was originally a handicapped bus, and so we got this sweet door on the side that's just massive, and we left this as more or less our garage space. So this is where we stuff everything. It's a mess, um, but up here's our bed and some storage and stuff, and it's really nice on sunny days. We can just lay up there and hang out and look out of this window. And we did this little 550 cord and a clip so we can just leave it open. So for back storage, we realized we'd really need extra storage uh, just to carry like dirty stuff like the gas and the diesel and really our mini split. So we did this hitch mounted rack. I wired the mini split on its own so it ends here. And then recently we installed this little 
hose for the gray tank hose and it's super convenient. I definitely recommend doing that. We're really happy that we have that side door because after mounting all this stuff, and we knew this would happen, but we needed the space. The back door only opens to right there. It is still usable storage, but otherwise we can't open it and lay back there and look out. That's what the side door is for. So this is our water inlet tube. We have 100 gallons of fresh water and we have 55 gallons of gray water. And these are the only windows in the bus that we deleted. Our bedroom is on the other side and it kind of keeps the bus cooler in the bedroom. All right, so again, this is the uh, 5.9 liter Cummins 24 valve. So far it's been great. We chose this engine specifically because we knew that it was a good reliable engine and we could put a lot of miles on it. I think we're at like 218,000 right now and then our odometer quit. So we have no idea what we're at. Now that you've seen everything on the outside of our bus, follow me and see the inside. So this is the entryway to our bus. We have redone these stairs at least three times since living in it. We added like stair trim right here to keep the tile in place. And so far it's working really well. I really like that we have a welcome mat on each step because we can just shake them out whenever they get dirty. And then on the left over here, we have shoe storage. And then in this area right here, we have Waffles litter box. Up front, we did little cubbies on each side. And then over here we have our switch and then we have a cord that comes over for our camera. Instead of keeping the original like bus panel thing, we wired in this rocker panel, which is super helpful. It gives me like the voltage of what our batteries are sitting at, the bus batteries, not the house batteries. Half of these switches are wired to lights inside of our bus and then the rest are to the fans. The clearance lights are wired into there. All right, so on this side of the bus, the first thing to point out is this little armrest. This is actually where we hide all of our wiring. So it all meets here in the middle. Our breaker box is down there. Uh, that's where I wired everything into the back. Where the heat comes in, normally it would have just pushed out of the driver's side or out of you know these vents. And we took a tube and routed it and just put our new vent here. So when we're driving, when Jenny would sit back here, I could just turn it so that the heat would blast towards her. This is our couch. This is like the center point of our bus, really. We wanted to do a huge couch just to have space. You can sprawl out on it. There's storage underneath. This is also where we house our batteries, more wiring, all of our electrical setup stuff. Okay, so on the other side of the entryway, we just have this little cushion. It's perfect storage for the pet stuff. And Jenny sits here as well whenever we drive. So when we were building our bus, we knew we really wanted a big kitchen. This is an eight foot um, countertop butcher block. And in the backsplash we have, it's actually fake tile. Everyone thinks it's real tile, but it's just peel and stick. And it's heat resistant and cleans really easily. So we have a 21 inch graystone oven. It's the perfect size for bus life. We have tons of storage in our, in our kitchen. I really love that we built so many cabinets in here. And I cannot recommend enough to get wooden plates if you are a traveler. We had glass plates at first and they just kept breaking. Every time we drove, like we would wait, have a new broken dish. So wooden plates are really useful. As you move over here, we have a large kitchen sink. It's really easy for doing lots of dishes in here. You notice I have a collection of plants. And yes, they are all real. Somehow I managed to keep them all alive. So over here we have our dinette. Someone can sit right here and then someone can also sit right here for having a meal together. And this chair actually was not supposed to be here when we first made our layout. This was supposed to be a wood burning stove area and we just decided to go with a diesel heater instead. Over here we have our pantry. It's pretty small. I kind of wish we had a bigger pantry. This is our little bathroom. It's very small, very simple, but it's everything we need and more. Um, we did do the extra sink in the bathroom. A lot of people just do the kitchen sink, but we enjoy having the separate space to like brush our teeth and get ready in the morning and stuff. Instead of doing like a nature's head or whatever, we ended up doing a compost toilet. Like we just built ourselves. Everything sits in there. We use wood shavings to cover 
you know, the poo. This wallpaper was was a process. This is one of the hardest things. It caused a couple fights, but I think it looks awesome in here now that it is here, so. So the shower is actual tile. This is actually the only thing in the bus that we did not do ourselves. My dad helped me with this a ton because I've never tiled anything and I could not come close to the job that he did. So thank you, dad. And then this is, I believe the only spot where we used the original bus light. We just kept the light there. It looked kind of cool in there. And then I just stole the wire and took it off the bus batteries and made my own little switch. This is where all the magic happens in our bus. We have a queen size bed in here and the only tough part about having the bed sideways is it's really hard to make the bed. Up here we have a projector. To the right over here is our projector screen. Behind me we have our Pioneer mini split which keeps us really cool but we can only run the mini split when it's on the generator. We can't run it off solar yet. And then over here we have a little extra space where the mattress didn't come all the way to the wall. So we have Austin storage right here and then on the right side we have some storage for me as well. And whenever we want to look out the window we just take this projector down and then we can open up our door. It lets in a nice breeze and we can also see all our friends. Hey guys! <laughs> So someone feeling inspired to do this is just to do it. The build and all that, I mean, I really think that just about anybody can do it. There's YouTube and Google and all yeah. that. Like we only talked to like one person to help us out and that was yeah. for the, the tiling of the showers, yeah. my dad. But just do it and then, you know, be smart about it as well. Like, you know, don't get squashed into one idea. Like one yeah. idea might be more expensive or just less convenient for you. So just like, if you want to travel, just figure out the way to do that that fits you. Thanks for watching this week's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you soon with another unique home tour.